In this video, we're going to discuss the slider behavior. And I'm actually going to show you two different ways you can utilize this. One is sort of like a secret door and the other as a trap. Um, so let's go take a look. We've got our corridor here and we can just walk down the corridor. And if we look to the left, we can see that there's a trap that looks pretty dangerous. And in fact, if we were to get underneath <laughs> one of those pillars, it can hurt us. So we don't want to go down that way. Let's try another way. Let's go down this way. And it looks like a dead end, but if we search around here, we can see, oh, hey, look, we can activate this door panel. So let's activate that. And we can go through our secret uh, area here and get through the corridor that way, go around the trap. Now you might be thinking to yourself, well, how is that different than door slider? Because door slider slides the object, you know, up and down or left, right or whatever. And indeed, I've got that set up here on a button. Uh, you could set it up, you know, so for a manual open or a, by a button, it doesn't matter. Either one can act be activated either way, um, but it is slightly different. So let me show you the difference and I'll show you how the traps work as well. Uh, so let's go down here to where our door is. You can see there's no button with this. I could have put a button, it would have worked just fine, um, but I wanted it to kind of be like a secret door. And you can see I'm using the slider behavior. So I have, you know, press E to activate. That's just the default prompt. I could have put anything there. The range is how far away can the player be from the object to utilize the object. Uh, slider mode, that's, you know, manual. So if I'm activating it manually, I'm going to choose manual. Um, these two uh, parameters do not apply to anything other than manual. So if you select anything else, it's not just ignore those two. Um, you can also choose switch or zone. And like I said, it doesn't ma really make a difference either way. Um, the slide type, we have lock, open, open, close, and continuous. So I chose lock open, meaning when the door opens, it stays open. You could also choose open, close, and if you chose open close, um, we're just gonna skip over the next parameter real quick and, and see that there's slide close delay. So if I chose open close, I could add a delay uh, and in that way it would stay open for a period of time and then close again. And then that would be that. Um, so that's kind of how that's intended. Or we could also choose continuous, which we're gonna see in a second when we look at the traps. Um, the slide direction, that's just going to be which direction is it going to slide. And this, I think, is kind of the one of the key differences to the uh, door slide versus this. Not only does it go up, down, left, right, it also goes forward, back, right? Now, with the door slide, you could do a an angle. You could do a 45 degree angle. This one you can't. So I couldn't make this slide up and to the right or down and to the left, uh, but I can go forward and backward. So that would be useful in the event. Let's suppose we have like a bookcase. And if I press on the bookcase, then it slides back and reveals a little hidden room or hidden pathway um, that could be used that way. And in fact, I'm pretty sure that's the intended usage or the original intended usage for this. Uh, when I, had this idea originally i was looking for a way to set up that trap i really wasn't thinking about hidden doors um and and again we'll get deep in that in a second but um, i was looking for a behavior that would do what i kind of wanted it to do and this is what i landed on and then through discussion we've modified it a little bit which we'll cover in a minute all right, so we have the slide speed. That's obvious, just how fast is it going to slide? Damage amount is gonna come uh, in play with the trap. So we'll look at that in a second. And of course, we've got a sound element so we can add a sound in case, uh, like when it opens. So I wanna quickly look at the differences here on door sliding. Cause as you can see, this is based on an angle. So in this case, I, I couldn't go backward forward, but I could go you know, up and to the right or down to the left. So you could make a kind of a, a neat little pneumatic door that opens. But otherwise, there's a lot of similarity, a lot of overlap. Uh, this can't be used as a trap because there's no way to add damage and things like that. So let's go take a look at the trap and see how that works real quick. All right, so we have our, our pillars 
our little metal uh, slidey pillar things. The the difference here is I've I've selected continuous, right? So while I was setting this up, I was discussing this with uh, Necrom, who by the way is done such an excellent job on job on all of these and has been really patient with me and uh, I explained to him what I was trying to do and I said well you know I don't want it to just open and close and then that be it I wanted it to be a continuous motion so he was kind enough to add continuous on here so now the object can continuously just go back and forth as many you know just forever um, so that's awesome and then also as I was testing it play testing I realized well is moving it's doing what i wanted to do but it's actually it's not damaging me it would just kind of push me aside when it ran into me and so he went through even more effort to add a damage amount on there so that when it collides with the player it uh, da it can damage you um so that's new as well so thank you so much necrom for for doing the additional work on this i think it really extends the behavior and makes it a little bit more versatile because now you can use it two different ways the only other thing I'll point out is I put a sound on each one of these to get that kind of clank, clank, clank sound. And that became a little too much because bear in mind, it's not going to be based on range necessarily. It's not going to be like, there's not a volume control. And when I originally tried to record this, it was way too loud and it was omnipresent and I didn't like that. So all I did was I just recorded the sound of them clanking back and forth like that and then uh, added that to uh, just one sound file and added it to like a 3d loop so that uh, as i moved away from the, the the objects that were clanking the sound dissipated so just pay attention to little details like that because it'll it'll make it more realistic and feel better and plus it was just way too distracting trying to talk over all the clank 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 all the time so if, uh, if you enjoyed the video or if you learned something new, please be sure to click the like that button down below. Uh, if you're new to the channel or if you just haven't subscribed or if you just like the fact that I hit a little subscribe button in there, for whatever reason, click the subscribe button down below. And uh, if you'd like a notification for when new videos are posted, just click the bell icon. That's going to notify you whenever a new video is posted. Um, but thanks so much for your time. I appreciate it. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.